In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect your Flutter app to a local host. In the previous video, we looked at how to connect your Flutter app to MySQL Server online. We used the triple zero web host to do that. In this video, however, we're going to take a look at how to use your local host. Since most of you may be developing offline, the local host may come in handy since you will not always have to connect to a server online to do that. You can load your project locally and then when you're done, you upload it. So to start, we need to have XAMPP or WAMP installed on your machine. In my case, I have WAMP server and that has to be using for this tutorial. But then XAMPP is not any much different from WAMP. So you should be good to follow this tutorial along with XAMPP. I'm going to launch my WAMP server. And once that's launched, I'm going to go ahead and open my web browser. And then here, I'm going to navigate to localhost. In the localhost, we're going to go to the PHP my admin. When you install, by default, the username is root and the password is empty. Okay, so login in Brazil to this screen. You can go ahead and create a new database from here. And I'm going to call the database Flutter Demo Database. Now I have to create a table for my database. I'm going to call it. I'm going to be needing three columns. For the three columns, the first one will be the ID. And then it should auto increment go. The next one will be heading and then body as we did for the previous one. It's gonna be virtual here. Here as well. I'm gonna make it 5000. Then go ahead and take this. So now we have this screen here, we have these columns. I'm going to go ahead and insert some data into my database. You can choose to write a query here. I'm just going to insert it with this interface. For our ID, it's going to be auto increment, so you can leave it. For the first data, I'm going to say hello. I'm going to go ahead and add some more columns. Okay, so once I'm done filling this, I'm gonna hit go. Then all the data have been added to my database. And so I have this here. This is my ID, my heading, and then my body. Right now, we're gonna write some scripts to make a connection to this our local database. I'm gonna come into my WAMP folder and go to this www. If you are using exam, yours should be in htdocs. And then you can see I have some. I'm going to create a new folder. Let's see, test local host. Okay, so remember from our previous tutorial, we created this file that will help us connect to a database. And then we also created this file that will help us fetch data from the database. So right now, I'm going to copy these two files and put them in the folder I just created. them okay so let me explain this quickly this line helps us make a connection to the database with pdo it takes the host the name of the database the username to the database and then the password to the database and on a local host the name of the database we created in our case is not new flutter server it's called flutter demo as you can see here so that's going to be the name of our database I'm going to paste that here and then we're on a local host. By default, the password is empty and the username is root. So this enables us to connect to the database and oh, I don't want to display this on the screen if the connection was successful. Otherwise, if there's an exception, we want to take the exception, put it into this variable, get a message from the variable and then display it on the screen. 
and then we'll kill the connection. Back here, we included the file connection.php, which is this file here. That will enable us to connect to a database. We included it in this script that we are running to fetch a data. And then we are making a query to get all values from this table. In our case, we are using a different table. So I'm gonna put that here. We are making this query to fetch the data from our table. Let's start. And we are making this statement to prepare this query here. And after that, we want to execute this statement here. So the data that I want to return is a JSON array. So we created this variable, which is an array. And then we are looping through the results that will be returned from this executed statement. And then we are fetching the data from the executed statement and putting it into this results form. After that, I want to push it into a JSON array. We provide the array we want to push in and the data set we want to push into the array. From our results, we'll get a list of JSON data which contains this, this, and then the body. So I think the ID from this results and assigning it to this ID and then pushing it into this my array and then doing same for this and then for this and then pushing them into this and that after that we want to display the data we have in this array and want to encode it in json format so back to main of that i'm gonna go down here i'm gonna come up here and create a method to fetch the data from a database I'm going to say get method. It's going to be asynchronous. And then we're going to provide the string, the URL, as we did for the first one. So do check out the first tutorial if you are not really getting what we are doing in this one. To get this URL, I'm going to go back to my web browser. Let me open a letter. So now, you can see the folder that we created this year. I'm going to open it and it's giving me an error. So I'm going to slash here and say local host. And then this opens this directory. So I'm going to open this and test to see whether everything is working. I'm going to, I'm going to open the connect. And as you can see, yes, connected. I'm going to open get data. You can see the data has been retrieved. Okay, so I'm going to copy this URL. And back here, I'm going to paste this. And instead of localhost, since I'm using the Android emulator, I'm going to say 1.0.2.2 and then the directory to your PHP file. If you are not using the Android emulator and then you are using a physical device to test, then you have to replace this with your computer's IP address. You can simply do that. Windows X, open our shell or CMD, and then type IP config. Okay, we are going to continue. Okay, so I've created this variable and I'm making a GET request to this URL with these headers. And whatever that will be written, I want to decode the body into this response body. And then after that, bring the response body. And then finally, I want to return the response body. You can check my previous tutorial on making HTTP requests in Flutter. And then you will get this if you don't already understand it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create the future builder. Down here in the body, I want to remove this. Let's say future. Future builder takes a future and then a builder. So the builder takes a build context and a synchronous snapshot, snapshot, and then returns a widget. And here I have this list which holds the data that will be returned from the snapshot. Okay, so I have also done this checks to see whether the data in the snapshot has been returned or we are waiting for the data to be returned. Whilst we are waiting for the data to be returned, I'll display this circular progress indicator in the middle of my screen. Or if the snapshot has an error, I just want to say error fetching data. 
Okay, so if I don't have any of these problems, I just want to return this list view builder. And then in the list view builder, I'm returning a list style which says head. And then I'm taking the data in the snapshot at the current index and the heading. And then do same for here, but this time around the context of the body. So I strongly recommend checking out my previous tutorial on making HTTP requests in Flutter so that you can easily understand what we are doing here in case you don't get what we are doing here. Okay, so inside here, I'm going to provide the method we created. And then put it here. I'm going to save and run this. And I have this error again, and that's because I'm still echoing this data. I'm going to kill this process. Come back here. I'm going to comment this out and then save this. Okay, and then you can see that we've successfully been able to connect our Flutter app to our local host. So that is for this tutorial. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how to insert data, delete data, and update data in our database. Feel free to like and subscribe to my channel.